Hi guys, Mike here. And some of you may remember uh, a while back I rebuilt uh, my do-all bandsaw. And when I bought it, I knew I had some problems in the transmission. And upon disassembly, I found out that uh, that uh, two of the gears were really bad. That's these two gears right here. And uh, you can see they're just they're just totally chewed up. So what I did was uh, I remade these two gears and uh, this one right here is one I made. These are just straight cut spur gears as opposed to helical gears. And so I made this gear and I made its mating pinion gear. Well I reassembled the transmission and I was never satisfied with how smoothly the transmission ran. Uh, the two uh, annoying things were it, it kind of howled, it, it kind of surged, and it was quite noisy. And when I went to turn the shafts when the transmission was assembled, it, it seemed like it, it while it didn't um, exactly drag, it just didn't roll smoothly like gears should. Well, I, I ran it like that for about a year, and I thought, well, maybe it will wear in a little bit and uh, kind of come out of it. Well, it never did, and it's, it's kind of bugged me ever since. So a while back, I went ahead and took the transmission apart. I really couldn't see anything wrong with it. So uh, digging a little bit deeper, um, I went back through all the calculations that I made when I produced the, the, the gear in, in its pinion and uh, I even put the the case of the transmission up on my mill and charted the distance between the holes and uh, compared that to uh, the dimension that I used when I calculated the gears gear teeth. What I found was is that the hole spacing was a little bit closer than what I used to calculate the gear teeth depth. So what I th I'm thinking is, is this thing is running a little bit too tight. I didn't really expect that to happen because when I put the transmission together, when I had got these gears done, I really didn't have any difficulty putting it together. I would have expected if there was interference in the teeth that that it would have been difficult, but, but it wasn't, and it did turn. And So long story short, what I am going to do is to, uh, based on, the, on the, uh, the spacing between the holes, it looks like I need to take about, go about eight thousandths deeper on this gear right here. So now this gear has been heat treated and it's up around, uh, if I remember right, about 45 to 55, 45, 45 or 46 uh, C on the Rockwell scale, which is gonna be too hard really to, to cut with my high speed gear cutter um, uh, you know, I might be able to get away with it, but I know I would destroy the cutter in the process. What I plan on doing is I plan on putting this on my surface grinder in my dividing head and I'll, I'll grind these teeth. There's 46 teeth on here, so I'll grind them. So that's a little bit of a background on why that I'm doing this project and so now I'll get into a little bit of of my strategy for how I'm going to approach this and process this project. Just a little bit about gear theory. If you put this gear and its pinion gear together and you turned the, the shaft that, that they ride on the contact point, as you turn the gear, the point of contact changes. And 
the, the arc that that forms as it changes is an involute path. So if you took that point as you turned the gear, and if you could imagine uh, a, a point in space as that gear turns, it would, it would follow an involute curve. An involute curve changes a little bit. It's not a true radius, it changes a little bit uh, as, as its contact point uh, changes along each one of the gear teeth, if that makes any sense. So someone, many, 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 many years ago, figured out that on small gear teeth like these, especially, that you could actually fit a true curve in, in place of that involute path, and those gears would function just fine. And many people have generated charts to help you calculate the various dimensions uh, using a, a, true, a true radius uh, in place of the involute curve. And, and in this book, this is, a, this is a fairly decent book, and this is the one that I kind of use for reference. Um, I had to learn a little bit about gears. I'm not, um, not well versed in, in gears. I never had the equipment or the need to uh, generate them until just recently. But in, in a book like this, or you can go online and, and, and find this information, uh, one method of cutting or manufacturing a cutter to make gear teeth is to use a button cutter. And basically, it's just like it sounds, it, it uses two buttons and uh, with a certain spacing and certain diameters on them. Uh, you cut, use that button cutter to cut the, um, the cutter that you're going to use to make the gears. And so you, you, you cut that cutter and then you harden the cutter and then you use that to cut your gears. So to determine what cutter you need, what kind of a button cutter to manufacture, there's little charts like, like this down here, if you can see this. Um, I'll hold this a little bit closer so you can see. This is the form they take, and it gives you a, a, a bunch of factors, and you use those, and you multiply those times the diametral pitch. And if, if you're not sure what a diametral pitch is, you can look that up. Um, really, for this video, I really can't really go into that too deeply. So using a, a chart like that, and this book, by the way, doesn't have, a, have the right chart for what I need. Uh, this, this particular one is, uh, has a 20 degree pit pressure angle chart and it has a 30 degree. I happen to need a 14 and a half degree pressure angle chart, which I found online. And I, I used that chart to determine the dimensions for my, my cutter. And I'm not going to use a button cutter. What I'm going to use is a grinding wheel. So rather than making a button cutter, what I will do is I will dress this shape into a grinding wheel. And to do that, I'll use my new radius dresser. And I bought this one new for, I think it was 100, like $160. And uh, uh, I bought it because uh, I've never used one with this exact design. They all look and work about the same. Um, but I liked it because it was kind of compact and I don't know, it, it, it kind of looked neat. I just wanted to do it. So what I've done was, uh, is I've set this, this radius cutter up and uh, 
to the dimension that I need for the diameter to, to curve fit in place of the involute path. And so I've, I've set that up, and so I needed to set up a path of convex on my cutter. So what I've done is I've taken the center distance from the bottom of this radius dresser plus the radius, which for me is 365 thousandths, and I've used my Cadillac gauge and an indicator to indicate over the top of the diamond down to the base. And so that's all set. Now I've made up this drawing in preparation of dressing my wheel. And what you're looking at here is this represents the shape of my wheel here. So this is the wheel. And this represents the arc that my radius dresser is gonna swing or the diameter here and I've worked out the movement so the way I'll start is I'll start by dressing off the bottom of my wheel and I will dress off the sides of the wheel lightly true that up and then I will move the center of my radius dresser I will touch the bottom of the wheel move up my 365 thousandths so that the center of the swing of the radius dresser is exactly even with the bottom of the wheel. Then I will touch the side of the wheel with the diamond with the radius dresser on 90 degrees and I will start dressing until I move in 75 thousandths. And then I will move over uh, from this center line to this center line, touch the side of my wheel, and move in the same distance. The thing, the only thing that's really important is that the center lines are even with the bottom of the wheel, and this width is exactly right when I'm done. Really, the how wide the wheel doesn't matter. That's just it just runs out, and so if I don't hit my 250 thousandths, I might adjust how far I move in to um, allow for that. As long as this is the right dimension when I'm done. I haven't got that dimension on here. Well, yes, I do. It's, uh, well, I can, I can get that dimension. And I'll check that with a pair of micrometers uh, carefully on the bottom of the wheel before I start. So once I have my wheel dressed, then I'm ready to work out what I have to do to position my gear in my dividing head and, and position the dividing head on the surface grinder. So that's where we're headed. We're ready for the next step. All right, let's just back up here for a second. One more thing I wanted to add is right on the bottom of this wheel, this grinding wheel, right in this corner and right here, here and here, will be two small uh, radiuses, and uh, I measured on the uh, the gear cutter, uh, just using that as a template, I measured 564, and what I'll do is when I get the uh, radius dresser grinding done, or dressing on done on this wheel, what I'll do is come back and with a Norbide and my radius gauge, I'll just hand dress those on the bottom of this wheel, and that'll be perfectly satisfactory. Okay, now we can move ahead.